One of the most amazing aspects of Tongues Untied is its genesis. Uh, Marlon came down the hall of our office building one day and announced that he had a new project. Now we think. Now we think of a fuck. As we fuck. Now we think of a fuck. This nut might. Now we think of a fuck. Kill us. The audio would be comprised of poetry by uh, Essex Hempel, Joseph Beam, these wonderful men who, with whom he had started to become friends. And the images would be generic, interesting images that he would go out to hunt and gather. <coughs> The more animated your face is, the better. Marlon fell horribly sick. He was HIV positive and had kidney failure. And at that point, the project became infused with a vitality, a rawness, and urgency, a voice that Marlon never um, had intended to, it to have at the, at the outset. He didn't think it was necessarily appropriate to point the camera on himself. But as he started to grapple with the editing, and he had all these elements and he was the master of you know gumbo editing as it were having taking diverse elements and cooking them just the right amount so that they all fuse together and don't get lost but he realized that it needed a cohesive spine that was lacking and in order to offer that spine he realized that it should focus on someone in particular and it had to have been marlin the notion of Pointing the camera on himself was a critical decision to make and a very difficult decision to make. I was mute, tongue-tied, burdened by shadows and silence. Now I speak. The audience was supposed to be three gay bars, uh, one in Oakland, one in San Francisco, and one in DC where he had a friend who was managing uh, the bar, and that was it. It's about an unburdening of, of any shame. It's about 100% living in your skin, being yourself. Shaki, I mean, coming back to the first time that you saw the film, if you could just speak about what it really felt like to absorb that. It was a film that it's, it's still sort of doing this healing work for our community generations after the fact. To learn that it was only supposed to be like shown in like a couple bars and it's like this like global, you know, thing now. Um, that we all sort of look to as a, as a, a sort of film text that uh, is groundbreaking for talking about the lives of Black gay men then. I sort of look at it as a sort of lineage that I want to stay within in my own work. Just on a personal level for me, um, it encouraged me to, to, to do more, to bring myself into the work a lot more, um, to tell my story, to collaborate with other poets, writers, scholars, musicians, to do that sort of communal work. That's the only way that we can seek out this sort of reconciliation that Marlon and Essex and Joseph Bean, they were all sort of beginning to do. I know the anger that lies inside me, like I know the beat of my heart and the taste of my spit. <laughs> 